organizations like South Shore Arts gets money, the Toll Theater gets money, the Art Barn and the Bell Parade, so all these organizations get money from the Indiana Arts Commission. They also fund individual artists to do essentially year-long projects that have either some benefits to the community or for their career, or preferably both. And the grant that they give to individuals is up, up to $2,000. And so I thought, man, I'd really like to get all $2,000. Um, but building something like these things that I that I often build out of things I find is more like a $200 project, and I didn't want to pitch building 10 things during the year. So I thought, what can I build that would be so big and massive and time-consuming and costly that I could get $2,000 for it? So this is what I had in mind, which is basically an enormous whatever this is. <laughs> this enormous thing. Uh, and it started out as as a drum. This is a huge, uh, there's an Irish drum called a boron, which is a, a simple frame with a handle inside that you can hold and go bum ba digga bum ba digga bum ba digga bum while the, while the step girls don't move their shoulders but move the lower half. <laughs> so, so they drum that, and this is basically an enormous, enormous one. This is a, just a simple frame of a drum with a skin head and there's a handle inside that you can grip. And so the first thing I thought was, well, I'll build an enormous banjo. And um, the first, the first in a series of panic attacks I had uh, was because the, the drum head was tacked on, literally with tacks. And I was thinking, if the drum head gets pierced, then that's, then that's the end, because I'd have to, I'd have to re-tack a, a drum head, and, and that's way out of my skill set. So I thought, well, I'll call a drum manufacturer and get, get one of their big orchestral marching drum heads and hoops, and I'll, I'll attach that on, and that'll be the head. And it turns out that the biggest orchestral bass drum is like an inch shy of this. And, uh, and so I called the fine folks at Remo, and they said it would be absolutely no problem for a $1,000 setup fee to get to work on making a, a head, and then I just have to place the order for the actual product, and we'd be all set. And, uh, and I had to lay on the ground and, and uh, breathe really heavily while the room kind of turned into a tunnel that seemed to be getting farther and farther away, because that would be half the grant money. So I decided what I would do instead is, is make a plywood face of the instrument that would allow me to also have some kind of artistic expression on it by painting this like kind of mandala style painting, and then it could be uh, it could be artistic as well as musical. And then I thought if it was up on on legs, then it could be kind of like a sculpture, and you could I don't know put it this could be in a show or an exhibit somewhere, and people could encounter it and walk around it, and it wouldn't have to be just like something you set in the corner the way that you often have to lead an instrument when you're done playing it. So what I arrived at was this big, round, paintable thing, and that it would basically be like some kind of upright bass also. Everyone with me so far? Yes. <laughs> All right, because here's where it's going to get, it's going to get weird, it's going to get weird from here. To spend, to try and get the price tag up to $2,000, and also because I think it's cool, is in this space here, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a series of tuners, and and the tuners are gonna run strings along the body from the from the bottom here basically to the top. Oh hey guys! Hey. hey! These are my friends also. <laughs> hey man! Hey, what's hey how's it going? These are my friends. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna put tuners here, and so there's gonna be strings that run along the the fretboard here that you can play sort of like a like a bass. There's also going to be about 18 more strings to run along the body. And so here's the part where you have to bear, you have to bear with me. In, in the instruments of North India specifically, many instruments have what's called sympathetic strings. So those are strings that you don't play by plucking, but these are strings that are, are activated when some other string is plucked elsewhere on the body. And the reason this works is because there's a mathematical relationship between the frequencies that notes make. You just have to take my word for that. But what this means, what this means in practice, let's see if I can, I'll do it here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this note right here. And uh, this note is D. And somewhere else on the instrument, now my instrument's not set up to make sympathetic vibrations, but some of it will happen anyway, hopefully. I'm going to play a D, and at least one of the other Ds on the instrument should start to vibrate, because those, the, the frequency of those two pitches are mathematically they kind of rhyme. Alright, so. You know what I 
stop and you still hear it, right? If, if this one right here, and I'll show you that's true because I'll, this time I'll do it again, and I'll stop it midway through, and you'll see that when I touch this, the note that you're hearing stops. sympathy with the note I was playing does exhibit some sympathetic vibrations. So when you set up an instrument for this purpose, you can maximize the properties that make a string that's at rest begin to vibrate on its own. And what happens is that, like, uh, like the instruments you may have heard from India, like the sitar, you get this cascading effect where, where there seems to be this kind of like ongoing wash of notes besides just the melody. And that's because as the player plays, each note that he plays wakes up a string somewhere on the instrument that a few milliseconds later comes to life without the sound of its attack. It just has the sound of the note springing to life and then fading back. So I have some hope that I can cover this instrument with tuners and run, run strings along it that make sympathetic vibrations so that the instrument when played has that same sort of cascading wash of notes that a sitar or another instrument from North India has. So that's as far as I planned. And we're about, I don't know, not quite halfway through the grant cycle. So this is basically where I'm at with this thing, halfway through. So at this point, if you, the public, has questions or comments or input about this, I promised the Indiana Arts Commission that I would take you seriously. Even though if you're not from Indiana, those Illinoisans here are also welcome to participate. So if anyone has anything that they want to inject into this project, now is the time to do that. <laughs> Let me have your input. Well, you can just... <laughs> are you planning to do classic bowing, or are you going to do some massive bow to... I have a dream of massive bowing. Awesome. Massive bow. Yes. Yeah, Anyone else? That, that Any was input? My, that was my question. Oh, sorry. So it would be played that way, but then you could also play it as a drum. I'm, I'm not certain. I'm not certain, but I hope. But I hope so. Okay. And often I find that that instruments that are not intended to be played percussively often have hidden percussive things within them, especially in in places where two, um, essentially two planes of the instrument, or, or not even of an instrument, but often, you know, like if you hit the if you hit your sink, you may find that one part of the sink makes one tone and one part of the sink makes another tone. But there's some place that you can hit which will activate those two tones simultaneously with enough exploration that can be found, and those things can be really interesting. So not only with sinks or bases, but with just about anything, a place where you can make one strike that makes two vibratory planes activate simultaneously can be really interesting. So my hope is that there's, there's some places on here, like that already has a nice kind of funky tone because this is rosewood. It's it's a wood that is is meant to vibrate. You know, it's used in instruments because it, it transmits vibration so well. So this is a good spot, no doubt. And you can hear too that it's not homogenous. Not each spot makes the same tune because there's there's bracing and supports inside. So here you're far from a brace. Here you're even further, but here. So maybe there's some drumming. Also, some massive bowing would be nice. Um, instruments like the like the violin and viola and cello have what are called C bouts. There's a big, which is why a violin is like shaped like this, and comes out. Those those cuts in are called C bouts, and those exist so that you can drag the bow through those C bouts. Otherwise, you get what happens here, which is which is if you run out of room with your bow. So I feel pretty confident that the top, the middle two strings will be bowable because you don't need to reach. There's not much angle needed to bow the middle two, but the, the lowest one and the highest one, there may not be enough room to get the bow through. So I'm banking on being able to bow the middle two and the outside two are anybody's guess. A tiny bow. A tiny bow is possible, yes. You do. There are instruments that are like that, that have tiny bows that, please. Do you, do you think that at any time you think you would collaborate with another musician on the same instrument, on, the, on that same instrument? I trust you're volunteering for that job. Is that the uh, I could be question? so inspired. I'm not a musician, but I could be inspired to be one. Yes. Well, I, I've been thinking that maybe the way to play this was not only to scan 
come on here so you've got a better grip, but to maybe even build in little like foot things so you can like get up in the get up in the saddle. And since there's two, there's no reason that two players could not each each board the board the vessel, right? Or maybe uh, maybe pass the bow between them. I mean, that's about things like that are going to happen. So that's why someone over on this side can get up there over there. Are you going to electrify the instrument? Yes. Yes, I am. What kind of pickups are you going to use for that? Well, I mean, I hate to brag, but I am a K, I am a K and K Electronics endorsed artist, so I do get my K and K Electronics at a mild discount. So almost certainly K and K will be the choice for me and for all of you if you choose to go something like this. The finest name in electrifying stuff, K and K. Aesthetic for are they for uh, musical purposes? They're for musical purposes because this uh, this thing's gonna have a back to it. And if there's no way for the sound to get out, the best sound is going to be trapped inside of it, where where the people who ought to hear it will not. So so I thought it must have some opening somewhere, and I thought this was the most, I hadn't planned on this, but midway in the game, this seemed like the most aesthetically satisfying way to get some openings in the instrument to let sound out without having, I don't know, too big a hole in a weird place, or especially since there are parts of it that are not yet figured out, I'd hate to put a hole where where the bridge might need to go and then be a real pickle. So this to me seemed like a place that was out of the way of other future components and fit with the kind of thing that was happening here. So now now that you've worked on this for so long, of course you have a relationship with this instrument. Yes. Is there something that's coming to you that that, that, uh, that you think that the, the name of this instrument or, or, or even the, uh, the character of this instrument is showing itself to you? I'm not a good namer of instruments, and, and often people come up to me at concerts at which they are generally seem to have been pleased by the experience and go, I bet these things all have really wild names. Yeah. Tell me some of the names of these things. And then I just have to stand there and have it haw because they don't have names, and I'm not a good namer of things, and I'm basically just, uh, I'm completely dysfunctional in this whole arena. As far as I know, this is just like, Green guitar, green, <laughs> yeah. greener guitar, uh, tennis rackets, shovel, loopy guy. Yeah. So they don't they don't have fun names, but I, I really thought that this one would have that I should set my mind to making a good name for this because I want to tell people, well, you know, I invented the whatever it is, and then people go, oh, you you're the guy who invented the. There you go. So, yes, I am. I'm also a K and K endorsed artist, and I you know blah blah blah. So if anyone has any input on that, if not at this moment, but, but sometime in the future, if you've had a chance to stew on it, I would love to have a good name for this, because I don't want it to just be big, purple, unwieldy thing. I'd like to have a nice name. Speaking of unwieldy, could you put casters on those? Like? It's going to have to have casters. Yeah. It's, it's, it is almost, but not quite unliftable. I can just kind of lift it. Yeah, but it still has more materials still to be added to it, and I think pretty soon it will be unlifted. Anything from you? <laughs> Anything from you? Anyone else? Anything? All right. Great. So that's your tax dollars at work. Thank you for hearing all that. If it's okay, I'll just play some more music on the other things I've added. If you have comments about those, then you can make them. Or if something occurs to you about this that you want to say, just pipe on up. When is this slated for completion? Oh yeah, when is this slated for completion? Um, I, I booked a date at the Toll Theater, the beautiful Toll Theater in downtown Hammond, uh, for May 30th, on which night I'm going to unveil the finished product, I'm going to perform some amount of music on it as part of an hour-long performance where I'm going to bring, this is, I don't know, maybe two-thirds of the instruments I have. So I'll bring all, I'll bring all of the instruments I have, somewhere around two dozen, uh, and I'll unveil this one and possibly three other secret ones that I've, that I've, had, uh, that I've had in various states of completion, but I thought I would, I would really try and get done for the 30th so it could just be a slam dunk of a night. So on May by May 29th, come hell or high water, this will be done. May 30th, 12th. All right. And you guys can all come. You're all invited.
you're invited, and you, and you, and you guys, and you, and you, and you, and this table, and you, and you, and you. All you guys back there, you're all invited. Full theater, basically.